Hello there. Just sharing with you some design development that we've been doing. Um, we've always had a problem that really the unit's only been designed to work off the, stop of the, off the top of a stove. And a lot of people obviously have their flue coming off the back of the stove. Um, we have, several people have put their units in the vertical just behind the stove. Um, so the air blows across the top of the stove and we know that works well. Um, but we were looking to um, offer the option when people have the stove coming off the back, going straight into a board, into a, 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 a traditional fireplace, um, and then going straight up the chimney. So in that case, you've got a horizontal pipe, then boarded behind, going behind the board, and no possibility of blowing from the vertical across the top of the stove. Um, so we were looking, you know, when we found that we could insulate the pipe um, from heat being um, passed into the steel and therefore cooling the turbulent airflow, we thought, I thought that we would be able to put a horizontal unit in and then put a pipe off that blowing across the top of the stove. Um, but we've put it to the design engineers and it doesn't work. Um, the reason for that has got nothing to do with the blowing part, which is what we solved, um, and everything to do with the way that the coil itself functions. Um, essentially what it does is as the flue gas goes up it, it creates turbulence and we knew that. And we knew also that it had no discernible effect on the temperature of the flue gases. But the, but the modeling that we've been doing shows why that is the case. And what's actually happening is that the circular coil sections are working like wings. Um, so if you know air on a wing hits the top surface, it's more curved, so it accelerates. And as it accelerates, it creates lower pressure and sucks the aeroplane into the air. And that's what's happening with the coil. So the, the flue gases are hitting the circles and they're accelerating. They're passing lots of heat in because the, the air becomes turbulent and they're creating um, a turbulent airflow between each of these sections. So they're creating vortices between the sections. So as it goes up, air is, the, the gases are accelerating around each section of the flue. Um, the effect on that is that the flue gases are so agitated, they're not dropping soot onto the flue. So it's not, just the, it's not just the fact that these coils are, are, are getting hot, they're in the hottest part of the flue gases that is stopping them from sooting up. It is also the effect that we're having on the gas flow. And these vortices are obviously very important to the way it functions. So we need that draft going through, which we get, of course, with the heat. But if we put it on its side, the effect won't be the same because the air will flow through will get the vortices, it will have a much smaller vortex effect and it won't be consistent um, top to bottom. Um, so we're not going to do that. Um, what we can do though, because we can see how consistent that effect is and that it's not just dependent on the heat, it's also dependent on the flow, it does mean that um, it's really clear that working it, working your flue so it sits above the T-junction at the back of a stove will work. And so rather than just um, offer that to people who've got a T-junction coming off the, straight off the back of their stove, so this goes into the back of your stove, you put your Rico heat unit here, um, and so you can clean either through that, but I think it'll be difficult, or you take the soot hatch off here and clean through that. Um, so we'll, 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 we'll do it like that and actually when people are putting their units into the fireplace, which is very common because it's obviously the cheapest and easiest way to put a stove in, then, then we, can have, we can add an extension tube to the Rico heat behind its board and as long as it's sealed in, um, that can push through. And if you've, you know, if you've gone back, the maximum, um, the maximum distance you can have your vertical flue 
from the back of the stove is 450 mil. Um, so you're not going to go longer than that. And as you will have seen, we tested our tube to 85 mil. Um, so we'll supply a tube to go from your hidden flue through the board to the back of the stove and it will just come out here and then function as normal um, by blowing the air across the top of the radiant heat of the stove. Um, so that's what we're going to offer, that's what we're going to do. We're not offering the unit in the horizontal, you'll, you'll have to have the unit in the vertical so you'll need room for that but you will be able to put that behind a board um, and seal it in and have the tube protruding through your board over the stove and working as normal. So that's what we're going to be doing. Oh, but, you know, if it's of interest to you, get in contact, send us pictures to look at your installation um, you know, and, and, and take a look at how you've got it. Not, it won't work for everybody because you might not have enough space in your fireplace to get the T-junction. Um, and you know, you've, got to be able to, you've got to be able to clean your flue, you've got to be able to check your flue, you've got to be able to check the temperature of it. Um, you know, it's all got to be your board, you've got to be able to take off or, or access through a hatch. So you know, there will be, there's likely to be modifications that you'll have to make, but it will be possible to do it. And if you do it and the flue and everything set up correctly, it will work. So you will get the benefits. Thanks very much.